Welcome to MIG TV News. I'm Morten Rasmussen. And I'm Jenny Hopper. In today's news, we will be looking at a brutal double homicide, a bar fight that got out of hand, the renovation of the roundhouse at Marseltown High School, and a student project at Marseltown Community College to build a house. We will be also looking at the Dash for Dollars event happening at MCC and take a look at the time-killing sensation Flappy Bird. Rounding up, we will be hearing sports report from this week's games. All this coming up next. Come join Heart of Iowa Big Brothers Big Sisters for their annual fundraiser Bowl for Kids Sake on March 1st and March 8th at the Total Bowl in Marshalltown. You and a team of friends can have fun while raising money for local children in need of mentors. Every dollar donated to Big Brothers Big Sisters is used to match a caring adult with a child who is in need of a mentor. Heart of Iowa Big Brothers Big Sisters is a nonprofit United Way agency. Contact Big Brothers Big Sisters to sign your team up by February 21st and join the fun. In local news, Gordon Lassley Jr., age 25, has been charged with a double homicide of his parents, Gordon and Kim Lassley. The couple was found dead in their home last week, presumably killed with a machete. Gordon had allegedly claimed that he killed his parents. Meskwaki Nation Police discovered the bodies first and have been aided in their investigation by the Tama County Sheriff's Office, Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation, FBI, and the Tama Toledo Police. Lastly, Jr. is currently in custody awaiting trial. A fight at a local bar in Marseltown turned very grim last Saturday night. We're going to Joey Graves with more on that story. On the 8th, Saturday morning, police had received a call that at a local bar, a fight had broken out where two were stabbed and hospitalized. The fight took place at Oasis Tavern in Marshalltown around 1.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Three people were involved in the fight when the suspect, Dalton Brodigan, age 23, pulled a knife and stabbed the other two people. When police arrived at the hospital, they questioned the victims and identified Brodigan as a suspect. Brodigan was charged with willful injury and going armed with intent. No further information has been released on the suspect, but the victims have been released from the hospital with only minor injuries. Back to you guys at the studio. Thank you, Joey. Most Marshalltown residents have noticed construction going on at the Marshalltown High School. Emily Barsky is standing ready with an update. For decades, Marshalltown High School's roundhouse had been an iconic symbol of the community. As it got older and began to deteriorate, it lost some of its zeal. Actions are now being taken to renovate the roundhouse back to its glory days. Marshalltown High School decided to renovate the roundhouse because of much needed changes to improve safety, enhance spectator experience, and improve the enjoyment of events. The roundhouse, as I'm learning, you know, was built in 1965 way ahead of its time, very visionary at the time, but no significant upgrades have occurred since. It's an outstanding building. It's a great venue for an athletic contest. It's home to our PE department, but it has worn over the years, and there just are many things that need to be upgraded and improved. On November 26th, a groundbreaking ceremony celebrated the beginning of the construction to renovate the roundhouse. Phase one includes an entire uh, renovation and restoration of the roundhouse proper, meaning all new floor, bleachers, lights, air conditioning, uh, and then uh, some new structures. Uh, uh, we're going to have a brand new fitness center uh, stacked on, uh, on top of a new boys and girls locker room for our whole teams because we have a shortage of locker rooms. All right, now we'll have a team room, a brand new hall of fame. Uh, we're going to have new uh, concessions and, and merchandising and ticketing and athletic offices. All Marshalltown alumni are invited to celebrate and contribute to the renovation of the Roundhouse. This is a very, very unique structure. It's the symbol of our community. It's iconic. Uh, and so we want to preserve that and restore it. But at the same time, this is an educational uh, uh, place where we have high quality instruction and we want to have, make sure that we have the resources to support our, our, our um, academic programming as well as support our um, activities and athletic, athletic programs. Uh, but then ultimately, this is a community place. And so uh, we want this to be a source of community pride, a source where we gather as a community, host uh, community-wide events, and really make it open and accessible to the public because ultimately it is there. To make a donation to the Roundhouse Renovations, contact Marshalltown High School. For Make TV News, I'm Emily Barsky. Thank you, Emily. The construction site at MHS is not the only one in town. Local college students from MCC have been working on a project of their own. More on that story from John Stanish. 
Students in the construction technology class taught by Russ Yarrow are at it again, this time building their annual class project at 605 Grandview Drive in Marshalltown for Gary and Sherry Edwards. It's a big project for a small class, but we are still staying on schedule, which is uh, it's a challenge, but it's, it's good. It's really kind of a, a neat process. We start this thing uh, usually about the first or second week in September we come out. When we show up in the fall, usually the foundation is in and the basement slab is poured and then we take it from there and build the building up. They're very, very good workers. Russ keeps them right on, on uh, task and uh, they respect him for that, I think. And uh, they you know when it's time to go, it's time to go, but they, uh, they work very hard. And, but I think they've taken a lot more pride in the work. I think they've worked real well with, with the group and they've, they've blended in a lot more. And I think they see that, wow, this is an interesting project and uh, they've come around real, real well, I think. So, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a real good experience with all the workers. Well, I've just recently learned how to do drywalls. I've learned how to do shingles and properly lay out a wall and do all this other stuff like joists and everything. I enjoyed the framing the most. That was fun. Yeah. Building all the doorways and... Oh, we're installing some drywall. And uh, next week we'll be finishing. I really enjoyed hanging the trusses on the roof. That was pretty fun. You got to go up high and just run around up there. It was pretty fun. Well, today we're in here doing the drywall hanging, and we're, we're just at the point now where we're going to finish up the hanging of the drywall, and we're going to start the finishing starting tomorrow. So we'll start taping and putting the coats of mud on to get it smooth by, by tomorrow. We'll start doing that. Russ is a good guy. He's a, he's a great instructor. He's funny. Keeps everyone on their toes. <laughs> He's been a great instructor. I mean, he's taught me a whole lot more than <laughs> more than I knew that I thought I knew. Anyways, I I really appreciate him as an instructor. And right now, I get contacted by employers more than I ever have, looking for help right now. And there there's a real real demand out there. The home will be finished later this spring, and there is an open house scheduled on May 9th. Reporting for McTV News, I'm John Stanish. And now to an event with huge prizes. Jesse Gale is standing ready with a report from the Das for Dollars event hosted at MCC last Tuesday. Hey, Jesse Gale reporting here for Dash for Dollars in the Student Union. Big game tonight, so come out and check it out. Who do you think the lucky winner is going to be? <laughs> Our big grand finale champion of Dash for Dollars. What'd you think? How'd it feel? It felt great. It felt great? How'd you get this organization going? Well, the uh, agency has been around for years. I joined them six years ago. I started out as a stand-up comedian and uh, was looking for a change. Instead of playing stand-up comedy clubs, I wanted to go into the college market, entertain younger people, and I had this opportunity, plus not only just to be entertaining, but also to give out prize money, because I remember being a college student and being broke all the time, and I thought this would be great karma to give out money to college kids. Report from Mick TV News, this is Jesse Gale. Oh, sorry, you caught me at a bad time. Thank you, Jesse. Most of us have felt the addiction these things can cause. Jake Piven is ready with a report about the latest trend. As of January, Flappy Bird, a new app for the iPhone and Android, was the most downloaded game on the market. In early 2014, Flappy Bird was reported to have made $50,000 a day through its use of in-game advertising. However, on February 9th, this popular new game was removed from the market. The game's creator, Doug Guyon, a Vietnamese developer with the studio Dot Gears, announced on February 8th that he would be taking the game down, saying, I'm sorry, Flappy Bird users. 22 hours from now, I will take Flappy Bird down. I cannot take this anymore. In an interview with Forbes, Guyon said that it had become a, quote, an addictive product, unquote. He also added that the game was, quote, gone forever. 
Since the game's removal, phones that have Flappy Bird pre-installed have been selling from anywhere from several hundred dollars to over ten thousand dollars. If it weren't for my ridiculously unbeatable high score, you can bet that I would be selling my phone too. I'm Jake Pippen reporting for Mick TV. Back to you guys. The Tigers are roaring towards more victories. Andrew Hutes with the latest highlights. The MCC men's and women's basketball teams were in action tonight against Kirkwood at the Student Activity Center. In the women's game, the MCC Tiger women's team rallied from a 14-point deficit but fell late to number 15 Kirkwood Community College, 71-60 on Wednesday night. Jamarco Martin scored a team-high 14 points. The Tigers trailed 34 to 24 at halftime, and Kirkwood built their lead to 14 in the opening minutes of the second half, leading 53 to 40 midway to the second. MCC went on a 13-0 run to tie the game and stay in contention. Kirkwood answered with six of the next seven points and held the Tigers to just one field goal in the final 6-15 to pick up the Iowa Community College Athletic Conference victory. Martin was one of four Tigers to reach double figures, joining Mackenzie Gott with 13, Jasmine Howe with 12, and Ashley Salgado with 10. Salgado dished out seven assists, her seventh straight game with at least five assists. Courtney Williams-Perry grabbed 14 rebounds, including 10 in the second half, but the Tigers lost the rebounding battle 40-37. to With the loss, the Tigers fall one game behind Kirkwood in the conference standings, dropping to fourth place with a 7-5 record, while the Eagles improved to 8-4. In the men's game, Joydell Carter dominated on both ends of the court and route to his seventh double-double of the season as the Marshalltown Community College men's basketball team defeated Kirkwood Community College 73-62 on Wednesday night at the Student Activity Center. The Tigers extend their winning streak to three games. Carter recorded his second straight 20-point game as the sophomore poured in 23 points and matched a career best with 14 rebounds. Carter shot 11 for 17 on the night to lead three players in double figures. Murdoch Green went 9 of 10 at the free throw line and finished with 19 points and a career high 9 rebounds. Mike Rodriguez scored 13 points and dished out 7 assists. Jamal Gatali recorded 10 rebounds for the second straight game as the Tigers out-rebounded the Eagles 43-26. It was an exciting night of basketball action here at MCC. I'm Andrew Hughes reporting for McTV News. Thank you, Andrew. That's all from us here at McTV. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jenny Hopper. And I'm Molden Rasmussen.